Hello, everyone. Uh, last time we met, uh, it was at a live meeting, and I got up through Kerkhoff's rules, uh, Kerkhoff's loop rule, which says anytime you go around a complete loop, in other words, starting at one point in the circuit, going all the way around to you turn out to the other part of the circuit, or to the same part of the circuit again, uh, the sums of voltage drops and voltage uh, decreases will add up to give you zero. That's Kirchhoff's loop rule. And then Kirchhoff's junction rule, if you add up all of the currents going into a junction, uh, that will be equal to the sum of all the currents leaving the junction. Uh, so I made use of that and then I drew a circuit and gave you a challenge to try to see if y'all could solve it. Uh, so I thought I'd go ahead and show you the solution now and uh, uh, work it out with you. So hopefully this will help. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, switch to a different camera mode. So let's see how this looks when I turn it on. Okay. So clearly my cat has moved my setup. That, that works out great for me because I get to do it all new. And it's not gonna matter if I just move my <laughs> screen like I'm doing now instead of moving my camera. That did not help very much at all. Oh, oh, oh. Stupid laws of physics has left turning to right and right turning to left. Oh gosh. Anyways, so here's the circuit. So you see we have a 12 volt battery. Uh, notice the polarity is such that the positive is on the left, just like with the uh, six volt battery, the positive is actually on the right. So just keep in mind, even though it's a, a hand drawing, it makes it a little less obvious or specifically because it is a hand drawing. But we're seeing that is creating a current that I've labeled I1 and it's going this way. So if you go in the direction of current, it will then run into a thousand ohm resistor and then a 200 ohm resistor. And then I get to a junction, notice that's where uh, more than two wires come together or apart or whatever. Uh, and then following down, it'll run into a 2000 ohm resistor in the direction of the current I2, and then goes back to the negative side of the 12 volt battery. Uh, the other side of the circuit has a six volt battery. And I'm saying the current in that part of the circuit is current I3. And I suggested it's uh, actually driving this way. We again don't really know. I just took a guess and if we get a negative answer that'll show us we chose the wrong direction. So no big deal. So it'll leave the six volt battery, go through an 8,000 ohm resistor and then come back to that junction that we saw earlier and then go through the two ohm resistor as current I2 again and then come back to the new junction and back into the uh, back side of the battery or the negative side of the battery. So we worked it out last time and basically I called this loop one, meaning I started basically from here and went this way. And then this one, I started basically from here and went this way and I called that loop two. And the reason why I did those two loops that way is I wanted you to see the two types of examples that can occur. Because when you go in the direction of that the actual current is flowing, a resistor is a voltage drop. But when you go in the direction uh, uh, the opposite direction that the current is flowing, a resistor will actually be a voltage increase. So these two versions, uh, let me work that out. So I'm first going to start off with loop one. And in loop one, I have uh, from Ohm's law V equals IR, I have I2 times 2000 ohms. Notice I said I'm starting here. So I'm going against the current. That means the voltage change across the resistor will actually be a voltage increase because current flows from high voltage to low. So I must be going from low to high. So it's a plus. And then now I'm going this way. I'm also still going in the opposite direction of current. So that'll be plus I1 now because it's a different leg of the circuit times 200 ohms plus I1 again times 1000 ohms. And then now I'm going from the positive side of the battery to the negative side of the battery. So that's a voltage drop. So I write that as minus 12 volts. And then I'm back where I started. So I set it equal to zero according to uh, Kirchhoff's uh, loop rule. I could simplify this a little bit and say it's uh, 1200 I1. Notice I'm dropping off the ohms for right now. 1200 I1 uh, plus 2000 I2 minus 12 volts is equal to zero. I'm gonna call that equation one. When you're dealing with systems of equations, it's always good to number the original equations because you always need to uh, take an accounting of how many equations you have and how many, uh, 
how many unknowns you have. That was a little bit out of focus, so I tried to refocus it. Hopefully, I've given you enough time to read that this is I2 times 2,000 plus I1 times 200 plus I1 times 1,000 minus 12 volts equals zero, which I simplified to 1,200 I1 plus 2,000 I2 minus 12 volts equals zero. So again, when you have a system of equations, it's good to number the initial equations. Uh, so you make sure you have as many equations as you have unknowns. If you have too many, that can actually cause problems as well. But if you have too little, then you can't solve it at all. And if you accidentally, you know, have a system of three equations and three unknowns and you only use two of them, two of the equations, then you're probably going to make some mistake uh, if you get any result at all. So it's good to keep track of that so you can write down later what you did. So now let me walk through uh, loop two. So in loop two, notice I'm going to start from here and I'm going this way, which is actually the, the direction that current I3 is going and it's even the direction I2 is going. So resistors will be voltage drops. So with this one, I'm going to go ahead and start right here and I go from the negative side of the battery to the positive side. So that's a positive six volt drop. I mean, uh, increase. So that's plus six volts. And then, uh, now I go uh, a current I3 through a 800 ohm resistor. So I'm going to say minus I3 times 800 ohms. And then I go around here and I reach this junction again. And now I'm going in the direction of I2 through a really ugly resistor that I drew horribly. So, but I'm going the direction of current, so it'll be a voltage drop again. So I'll say minus I2 times 2000 ohms. And then I'm back where I started from, so it's equal to zero. I'm going to clean this up a little bit, not much, but I'm going to clean it up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to say that in this case, it is negative uh, 2000 I2. Notice I dropped the ohms again. Minus 800 I3 plus 6 volts is equal to zero, and I'm calling that equation two. Now, if I look up here at the junction, I have a current I1 coming in and a current I3 coming into the junction and then a current I2 leaving. So Kirchhoff's loop rule says, here's equation three, that I2 is equal to I1 plus I3. So now I have three unknowns, I1, I2, and I, uh, I1, I2, and I3, we don't know. And we have three equations, one, two, three. So that's exactly what we need. And ideally, we should be able to solve this. And uh, what there, there's many different ways. You could actually set them up as a matrix and use Gauss-Jordan method or do the determinant method and all that good stuff. I'm just going to use brute force algebra since both equations, uh, one and two, have I2 in it, and this has solved for I2 already. I'm going to replace I2 with I1 plus I3, and then uh, combine the two equations in such a way that I can eliminate one of the variables. So first off, I'm going to write this as equation. Well, I'm going to go ahead and plug in I2 is equal to I1 and I3 for one, so I'm going to plug in three into one and when I do that I get 1200 I1 plus 2000 now instead of I2 I'm going to put I1 plus I3 minus 12 volts is equal to zero obviously I can simplify that a little bit this 2000 is going to hit the I1 it'll become 2000 I1 plus 1200 I1 so I get 3200 I1 plus 2000 I3 minus 12 volts is equal to zero. I'm going to call this equation four, just so I can refer to it later. Not much use in calling anything here, but uh, I can always track back where it came from, so that's kind of helpful. Now I'm going to plug three into equation two. And from that one, I'm going to get... Uh, minus 2000 now in place of i2 i'm going to put i1 plus i3 minus 800 i3 plus six volts equals zero again i can simplify i have a minus 2000 i1 and a minus 800 i1 so i'm going to say this is minus 2800 i1 and then minus 2000 
I3, and then plus six volts is equal to zero, and I'm gonna call this equation five. Now you might notice this I3 term in four and this I3 term in, in uh, five are equal in magnitude and opposite in sign. So that tells me the smartest way to actually solve the system is to add the two equations. So I'm gonna add equation four and five. I don't have to multiply them by any constants because the coefficients are already equal but opposite. So when I add 3200i and 2800i negative, uh, I'll get a positive 400. So I get 400 I1, remember that happens to be ohms by the way. And then when I add 2000 I3 to negative 2000 I3, I get zero. But when I add negative 12 volts to six volts, I get negative six volts equals zero. That gives me I1 is actually equal to six volts over 400 ohms. And when I divide six volts by 400, I get 0 0.015 amps. And I'm pretending like these voltages are one decimal place. So that's I1. So I1 is evidently chosen correctly as far as the direction because the value came out positive. Now I can take this result, uh, which is really just the uh, uh, result for I1, maybe I'll call it number six, okay? I'm gonna take equation six, and I'm actually gonna plug it into equation four. So I'll plug it back into that guy. So six into four, and you'll see what I get is four is 3,200 times I1, which is 0 0.015 amps plus 2,000 I3 minus 12 volts is equal to zero. If you multiply 3,200 times 0 0.015, you'll get 48. So this becomes I3 is equal to 12 volts minus 48 volts over 2,000. So I3 is actually equal to negative 0.018 amps. So I obviously chose the wrong direction for I3. In fact, I3 is going this way. In some sense, you're charging that battery. So now let's take, I'm gonna call this number seven, and let's plug seven for easiest, since I got one and three, why not use equation three, which has I2 already solved for. So I'm gonna plug six and seven. So plug six and seven into three, and I get I2, which is equal to I1 plus I3, is just 0 0.015 amps plus negative 0 0.018 amps, which is negative 0 0.003 amps. So now I have current I3 as well. We were also wrong about that direction. It's more likely to actually go this way. Uh, so we were correct about the direction of I1, but wrong about I2 and I3. And we were able to solve the actual circuit. And that's it. Hopefully that'll be of some use to you guys in studying.